Would you please join together in singing number 331, O Sacrament Most Holy, number 331. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And your On the solemnity of the body and blood of Christ, the glorious patronal feast of Corpus Christi, let us acknowledge our sins, brothers and sisters, and thus prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament and strengthen us in holiness. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the repentant. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine, and being a priest of God Most High, he blessed Abram with these words. Blessed be Abram by God Most High, the creator of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who delivered your foes into your hand. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Jesus spoke to the crowds about the kingdom of God, and he healed those who, were, who needed to be cured. As the day was drawing to a close, the twelve approached him and said, dismiss the crowd so they can go to the surrounding villages and farms and find lodging and provisions, for we are in a deserted place here. He said to them, give them some food yourselves. They replied, five loaves and two fish are all we have, unless we ourselves go and buy food for all these people. Now the men there numbered about 5,000. Then he said to his disciples, have them sit down in groups of 50. And they did so and made them all sit down. Then taking the five loaves and two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing over them, broke them and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. And they all ate and were satisfied. And when the leftover fragments were picked up, they filled 12 wicker baskets. The Gospel of the Lord. Melchizedek of the Old Testament, the priest of Salem, would offer a sacri symbolic sacrifice of peace. The participants would give a tenth of what they had to bring about that peace into the lives of those in need through their stewardship and generosity. It's not the priest we speak of of the new covenant. The bread and wine he offered was simply bread and wine, a symbolic gift. Fast forward and Jesus in the gospel satisfies the human hungers of the crowd. Easy to just let them fend for themselves 
But Jesus satisfies it and invites his disciples to be part of what it will take to satisfy them, to fulfill their human hunger. That would be also a sign. For later, all of that would pale in comparison to when on the night before he suffered, he extended to us the unending effects of the sacrifice of the cross, that we could proclaim the death of the Lord, as St. Paul put it, until he comes again. And this time, not picking up bread and fish to satisfy a momentary physical hunger, but bread and wine to be transformed into his very body and blood. Today, on the Feast of Corpus Christi, we celebrate what Thomas Aquinas eloquently expressed. How sacred a feast is this, in which Christ is himself consumed. Last week, for Trinity Sunday, when we looked at the invocation of the Trinity and the sign of the cross, and the outpouring of the Trinity in our life in baptism, I asked you all to ask yourself a question to see how what I was saying applied to you. And I said, if you have humility, you'll answer it honestly. I want to thank those of you who reached out to me and shared with me the changes that you are bringing about in your life because of the realization you came to last Sunday. I asked you to stop and think when you walked in church at the beginning of Mass, before Mass started, where was your head and your heart when you blessed yourself in the water of the baptismal font? Today, I ask again in all humility that we examine what our exterior actions say about what we understand and believe about the Eucharist. A statistic recently showed that 30% of Catholics understand what the Eucharist is. 30%. The rest give such answers as, well, it's a way we remember Jesus, or it's bread and wine we eat to remember him. Jesus didn't just say, eat some bread and wine and remember me. He said, by entering into this mystery, I will be made present. This is my body. This is my blood. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. John Paul II once said, in the Eucharist, Jesus has become our traveling companion. He comes within us that he can come with us. He made it clear when he gave us the gift of the Eucharist at the Last Supper that Eucharistic devotion is not simply shown by the way we receive him or by the way we carry ourselves in his presence, but then by the way we take him and translate it in service. For what he did at the table was followed by what he did on the floor at the foot of the table in washing their feet telling us that if we shared in the Eucharist, we could never lose our ability for downward mobility. And so today, we need to face the reality that the absence of true faith in the Eucharist often is the fault of those who profess to believe it. I begin with priests who celebrate the Mass in a way that is flippant or irreverent. When a priest is ordained, he's told, you are a steward of the mysteries of God. It isn't yours to manipulate. It isn't yours to do an ongoing running commentary through. You are entrusted with celebrating the liturgy as the church presents it. To do it in a way that helps people enter into the truth and not get distracted or unfortunately sometime become more entertained by detail and all the time miss the heart. And so for every priest, this feast is a time for personal examination. How do we prepare for the celebration? How do we offer thanks after the celebration? How does the priest, recognizing that he is the one responsible for calling heaven to earth on the altar in the Eucharist, how does he express his gratitude by the custody he gives to the Eucharist by the time he spends before the Eucharistic Lord? I ask myself that question often. 
For all of us, just as we had to ask the question about the entrance, when we enter into this holy place, do we cross the threshold with a realization that here we encounter God? When we genuflect toward the tabernacle, is our mind and heart united to our bodies? As scripture tells us, every knee must bend before him. Only a physical illness prevents us from genuflecting do we stop and bow profoundly. But it's not a bow or a genuflection when we pass by Jesus himself in the Blessed Sacrament. We bow to sacred things that remind us of him. We bend the knee in front of Jesus himself. How we participate in the Holy Mass. What we do after Holy Communion, offering a thanksgiving. All those things either convey that we understand or betray that we don't. Corpus Christi is the annual occasion to examine how we approach Holy Communion with reverence and awe, knowing what we're doing. The bow we make as the Eucharistic Lord has shown to us is a sign of our reverence and love. The way we choose to receive him is to be sure that we don't receive the Eucharist the way we eat any other food. It is easy to make it different when we receive on our tongue. If we receive on our hand, then we are rem reminded of the directive that we are to make of our hands a throne. I don't know why that can't set in sometimes with folks. To make of our hands a throne. Not doing this, not... To make of our hands a throne elevated upon which to receive the king and then looking at him with love to reverently consume him who is present in every particle not flippantly as though we just picked up a chip or a cookie one time someone had a friend who was a Muslim and as you know Muslims seven times a day facing Mecca have a very distinct prayer ritual the person was going to come to Mass with them, and so they explained that the high point of the Mass is communion, where Catholics are receiving their Lord and their God. And the Muslim sat and watched. And when the Mass finished, he said, they're not receiving any God. He said, by watching them, I didn't see any indication that they were approaching God. I commend parents. I come in during the day and there are parents and grandparents who bring little children in. Because we don't teach them how to behave at mass by simply going shh, shh, quiet or not bringing them. We bring them in the quiet of the day. We talk to them about the sacredness of the place. The way they carry themselves in this holy place then inculcates in them a great devotion. One little boy has a color form set that his parents got for him and has all the little stickers you put on of all the things we use at Mass. And every Sunday, as he comes up for blessing with his mom or dad, he has a little thing in his hand, and I didn't quite know what it was. And one day I asked him, it's the little processional cross from the kit. He notices that when we come to the altar of God, we come carrying the cross to show our love for Jesus because he shows his love for us on the cross. And so he takes that little piece and carries that in his hand. But he's just a little boy. But his parents have known from the moment of any awareness that you can begin to instill a sense of the sacred. Parents who place their children before them for blessing and who teach their children to watch mom or dad receive the Eucharist. Looking at little children looking up as with the greatest care, a parent receives Holy Communion. And then after Mass explaining why they receive with such care. That is what instills faith in the Eucharist. When we fail to do those things, our children grow up as part of the statistic that doesn't 
even know. Faith in the Eucharist does not begin by giving people articles to read. It doesn't begin by putting kids in a classroom. It begins in a home. It begins by example. It begins by the way you and I act when we're here, by the care with which we come to Holy Communion, and by the zeal with which we go out those doors, realizing that he is a companion with us. And we take what we have received within us to those around us. May Corpus Christi, this solemn feast, bring about that reawakening in all of us, that we might then be part of evangelization, which means teaching by example who this is we receive and who it is we seek to imitate as we seek to become who we receive. Oh, how sacred a feast is this in which Christ is himself consumed. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In recognition of this sacred moment in time and in gratitude for God's attentive love, let us bring our petitions before him with confidence. For the church, may our sharing in the body and blood of Christ be reflected in the ways we reach out to all members of this body, of his body, and lead them to the one who can truly satisfy our hungers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all priests and seminarians, may their own lives authentically reflect Christ, the victim and priest who offers himself in the Eucharist. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a deeper appreciation of the meaning and value of Holy Mass and communion in the lives of all lukewarm Catholics, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who keep our sick and shut-ins united with the Lord as they faithfully carry the presence of Jesus in Holy Communion to them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For eternal joy at the heavenly banquet table for all who have gone before us in death, especially Bill Thompson, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the needs of one another and for all who have asked for our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and merciful Father, today we commend to you all our fathers, living and deceased, Continue to bless them to be images of your paternal care. Receive the souls of those who have gone before us. We particularly commend to you all those enrolled in remembrance of our prayers in the Father's Day spiritual care. We ask all of this trusting in your merciful love, grateful for the care you show us through the witness of their lives. Through Christ our Lord.
Please join together in singing number 349, The Supper of the Lord, number 349. Church, O oh Lord, we pray the gifts of unity and peace. 
Through signs hard to be seen in mystery, the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. in memory of me. A mystery of faith. Partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who've died in your mercy, and welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Rule him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer a sign. Number 361, 361.
Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Anticipating tomorrow, certainly we offer all of our fathers our best wishes for a very happy uh, Father's Day and our gratitude for the ways in which you image the Father to us. This Friday is the Solemnity of the Sacred Heart to make it possible for more to join us for the celebration of the Eucharist on this special feast day. Please notice in the bulletin that on Friday there will be a morning and an evening Mass, and that's detailed in the bulletin um, as well. Also, Sienna Sorority for our young adult women meets on Tuesday, for Saudi Fraternity for Guys on Thursday. RSVP dates are in the bulletin as well. Uh, next Sunday, we will have a uh, very special joy in celebrating the rite of blessing and sending for a young woman who recently uh, finished at UNH. Uh, Maria will be entering the Daughters of Mary of Nazareth. I've known Maria ever since she was a little girl. She grew up in my previous parish and has been a part of our parish since at UNH. Uh, so we look forward to blessing and sending her. This is a parish very fervent in praying for vocations. And once again, uh, we ordained two priests last year and we haven't skipped a year. This year, Maria will be entering the Daughters of Mary of Nazareth, a wonderful community. And so we urge you to join us by uh, 
being present to pray with and for her in the sending next Sunday at 1030 Mass. And details on this and all the various other announcements and upcoming opportunities are in the bulletin. The Lord be with you. And May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go home in peace. Please join together in singing number 732. Alleluia, sing to Jesus, number 732.